Hi, I'm James and today what we're going to do is we're going to do a little board build. Now, when I'm building boards I like to use two foot by two foot. I like small games. You can see they fit nicely on my, on my kitchen table. Now, I've gone for XPS 4. I've gone for a fairly thin one this time. I'm trying out a thinner board. Uh, I usually use a bit thicker but I think this will do it nicely. So what am I going to use for this then? Well, first of all we're going to start building it up. So a few things I'll need for that. A bit of PVA some masking tape, some cardboard, a scissors and possibly the most useful thing that nobody ever tells you to have when you're doing these, a cup of tea. So, what we're going to do, well if you've seen how I made the cardboard hills um, then I'm going to do something very similar. I'm going to use this to basically form my rocky outcrops. So I'm going to have one starting on a corner, so I don't plan these much as you can tell, so that's going to go on to there, so what we'll do quite conveniently, turn that around just so I can get an idea for this, it's probably a little bit, going to be a bit higher up. Let's use the other corner, another corner. There's loads of corners on this one, this is really helpful. Really doesn't matter how rough these are. We'll see why in a minute. Well, if I keep knocking them on the floor, it will make a difference. Okay, I'll need to cut that one down a bit now. I'm really doing well today for dropping stuff. So, I need to go a little bit further out right this time, I think. Catch this on everything. a little piece in. Just so I'm getting a rough idea of what I'm looking at. Back onto there. there. Still move a little bit. It's not looking bad. I think what we'll do is extend it out slightly. I don't want a massive rock outcrop or anything, I just want a little bit of a, a hill just to give a bit of an impact to the board. Now what I'm going to do, normally I would use a hot glue gun for this, uh, except I ran out of sticks. So what I'm going to do is just drop a bit of PVA on. It decides it's coming out. I only want a little bit because I'm just going to use this to help hold it in place. Probably to enlarge that hole. I should have cleaned that up a bit when I used it last. Just literally a little bit just to tack it in place. You'll see why that's such a minor thing in a minute. Take one, let's do it the easy way. And the top doesn't even come off, so that was the there goes that plan. Tell you what, rather than faffing around on camera, I'll use the better stuff. Some Mod Podge, which is really nice, thicker glue. So, put it on there. So 
so I have to hope I actually put these back on in the right order, which has been known not to happen. I can have to put a little bit on there just to expand that a little. Drop that one on. And this is where the masking tape comes in. So I'm literally just going to cover this now with masking tape, which has got the added benefit. It's going to help hold it down. Being paper based, it tears nice and easily. Push that on a bit. See my cardboard hills, you'll know how this works. I'm not somebody who spends hours on terrain, I want something I can play on. Uh, the fact I want to play on it straight away is probably a key factor for me. Exact. Just building up a little bit more crop. Don't worry if you get these little crinkles, they actually add nicely when you do this. You almost want some of them. a nice little corner slope finished. So I think what I'm going to do is put a couple of little bits out. Um, so with these, literally, just got a few little rocks sticking up. You literally, just get a little bit of cardboard. Doesn't even need to be neat and tidy.
and you need to stack them neatly. Literally chuck a piece of card, of card together, tape it down. Okay, am I going to do any more? Will that do? I think. Just tidy that up a bit there. I think that should actually do. I'm just going to quickly look around, check for any bits where they're not stuck down particularly well. I can always just chuck a bit more tape over the top. Ah, I do want a little bit more. Crumpled up quite usefully. Crumpling up like that can actually be quite good as you'll see in a minute. Right, and that will do for now. So the next step is going to be to get a little bit of paint. So bear with me while I get the paint. So time for the next step. What I'm going to do is paint any areas that I want to be rocks black and I'm just using a cheap uh, ready mixed black uh, poster paint just, just paint the rock itself black cheap little brush it's definitely seen better days these with glue and things but it will do what I want it to do. So these little outcrops I'm going to tend to do in the black. I'm not going to worry it doesn't look too black. A bit more on that one perhaps. Because this isn't going to be how they finish. I'm not going to do the whole of this as rock, but I'm going to pick out a few areas. One of those things is perfectly fine to change your mind as you do this. Have a look at one there. Do this, you, don't, you wouldn't tend to have an area like this all rock, it's going to want some outcrops and things within it, so that'll do us for now. So, the traditional where did I put the top for the paint? And for now, that's the rock finished with until that dries. So, while that's drying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off the brush and I'm going to clean off the other brush as well, that was how this one ended up like that. And then we're going to look at putting the texture onto the bulk of the board. Okay, so now for the next step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make up a bit of a mix. Now this is an experiment for me, I've not used this in quite the same way before. So I'm going to put plenty of PVA glue into, into some sand. I'm going to put a bit of cheap, in this case, um, what's it? buckskin brown, because I want a lighter brown. I usually use a very dark brown, burnt umber, or something like that, 
but this time I want it to be a bit paler. That's not coming out very well, so I'll take that. Let's check, and it may be that this is actually ex expired. Oh, I can get a lump out and I can work from there, I think. Yeah, let's not say what that looks like. So I'll drop that in. And I'm going to try, this is, this is another bit of experimenting, a little bit of tile grating. Now I've not used tile grout before, so this should toughen up the board a bit. Okay, so I've got all that in there. So now what I'm going to do is mix all that together. If I can mix that brown paint. It's starting to mix. to what I expected but let's try and apply it. This is going to be interesting I think. Possibly do a bit more PVA. So I'm going to go for Mod Podge instead. Put a bit of Mod Podge in it. Mainly because I can't be bothered to take all the time getting the PVA out. So let's mix that in. As you can tell, this channel doesn't do really detailed breakdowns as to the amounts. That's looking a bit better. So now we'll start spreading that everywhere we want the grass area to be. Or grass or bare earth. I'm not going to wait too much if we get a bit of overlap onto the black. In fact, that's actually going to help. To be honest, if, what I normally do with this is I just use the PVA and the uh, paint. And you can actually mix that on the board as you go. At least if you've got the right paint you probably could. This one, like I said, it's obviously seen better days. No pattern or plan whatsoever with this. Just get all this on. You can see now that black rock is almost emerging from the base colour. What I will have to do with this one is I'm probably going to have to paint the edges once I'm done. Get a few black streaks like that in, I'm not going to really worry because that will be easy enough to conceal.
do need to do is make sure you can't see the black through. If you can see the black, it's probably not thick enough. I need a little bit more going on. might need to make up a little bit more of this. nice thing with this mix now is you can actually make some nice texture effects with it. Now if you were actually building a board for something like Mars, you could be almost finished at this point. Fortunately I'm not, so I've got more to do once this is done. I'm not going to worry if that colour changes slightly, because we can blend everything in. I'm going to make up some more of this and then I'll be back in a minute once I finish this bit off. Okay, so you can see that's that just about done. Now the one thing I didn't account for is it does seem to have dried a bit faster than normal. So what I'm going to do, put some, oops, I have to clean up that tablecloth there, put some of this on. This is basically just a bit of watered down PVA, just to help me. Okay, definitely need to clean this up from done. From done. Just to give me a bit more for the for the grass to stick to. Get the brush and just quickly brush a bit more of that over. Looks like it wasn't as dry as I thought it was because it does seem to be slightly sprung in mind. End result is it'll just give me longer to work on it. And one of the problems with the, the poster paint is it does seem to take a lot longer to dry because that is still spreading it out to the mud. We live and learn, and it had the benefit of being really cheap. Because let's be honest, wargaming figures cost enough these days. Okay, so we've got that down. 
Now the next step you've got options. You can use um, flocking which has got the benefit of being a bit cheaper. Or I'm going a bit more upmarket. I'm using um, static grass. So we'll have a look how that's going to all come together in a second. Clean the brush. And I'm going to pause this while I assemble the static grass applicator. Okay, so I've just put some static grass in the applicator. I'm using um, some Battlefield step grass from Army Painter. I've also got some other types from WW Scenics. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this in patches because what we want is we don't want it to look uniform. So. So, that's the first one. Let's add another one. Uh, we'll do some one mil patchy grass next. Don't worry if there's still bits left in, because at the end of the day, that isn't going to be a drama. It just helps blend them a little. On, I think. So that was the patch of grass. I'm going to put some two mil dead grass in now. I'll probably finish this off actually. So we'll sh shift now to some autumn grass, which is a darker green. Plenty of this in.
very well left handed. this off. So let's do a nice and lighter colour. I've got some nice one mil dead grass. Let's use a bit of that. Goes nicely with the, the two mil we put on earlier I suppose. But it's giving me the look I want which is basically plains of Rohan. This is starting to look a bit like that. Okay, so decision time. Is that going to be done? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the excess and we'll have a look. So as you can see that's nearly done. There's one patch still drying up there because it was a bit didn't look right so I added a bit more. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically overbrush, which is very similar to dry brushing but with a lighter coat just to give a bit of texture to these rocks. Don't need a lot. You can see what that's doing. It's just giving that little bit of a texture. On these I'm not even going to bother because I've actually got a really nice effect that I liked. I played around a bit over this side and I've sort of covered those a bit more than I normally would. But I can live with that because you do get them I cut loops didn't take the paint off that one. No mind that still looks okay. What we're gonna do is just dry brush that up a bit more now. Lighter grey. Until just on the top surfaces now. Do you remember I said the, the paper helps? You can see that's actually using the texture to give me some nice stone effects. Surprisingly effective. And there we go, I'm going to let that dry and then I'll come back and take a few shots on it to show you how well it's come out. Get a bit of that tile grout covered up there. What I might even do is put a bit of um, clump foliage around some of those. I'll have a look at that later on. So here we've got the, the final version. Uh, it's still not fully dried out in that area. I'm just going to give that some more time to dry. But I, I thought I wanted to try and get the, the footage on. Uh, you can see the rocks look really nice. Um, and the slope looks really good. So I'm very really pleased with that. For what well, probably was about two hours at the most work, I've got a really nice two foot by two foot gaming board. Have a go at your own. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please click on the like button below so that I know what people like and I know what to make more of. Uh, alternatively, if you've enjoyed it, and think you'd like to see more please click on the subscribe button that way you get notified by YouTube whenever I bring out a new video and you never know there might be something in there that you hadn't considered because I do cover a variety of things on the channel and finally if you have a little bit of cash going uh, I now have a patreon account um, I'm always looking for patrons because at the end of the day let's be perfectly honest it's 
a good way for me to get a little bit of money that will use to buy review items or to travel to museums and so on. Uh, I don't put a huge amount on that. At the minute all we've got is one tier charging a pound uh, a month which just as I say helps cover my costs. See you soon.